common woodworking task I have is making up some templates, printing them out, sticking them to plywood such as this or MDF, then cutting out those shapes and making them MDF or plywood, the template to use on my actual work pieces. Whether that's flush trimming them or just as a good marking gauge for using on the bands or whatever, it's not really important. There are a few different ways you can get the design onto the plywood. If you've used a laser printer, you can use acetone to transfer the ink. I don't have a laser printer and acetone can be quite stinky, so not something I really want to deal with. Another option is spray adhesive. This can work really well, but again, it can be a little bit stinky because of the chemicals in the spray adhesive and different brands, good, bad, otherwise, and I don't really have any other use for spray adhesive, so it doesn't often get used before the can goes off. Or more recently, I actually ran out of spray adhesive and I couldn't get any in because we had a lockdown here in Melbourne and none of the local stores had any and I couldn't get any shipped because it was classed as an explosive good, so it just wasn't available. Another option is PVA. It takes quite a long time to dry, but it works. Uh, glue stick will also work, but they all have a common problem where you've stuck the piece of paper on and if you're cutting out interior curves using something with a reciprocating action, like a jigsaw or a scroll saw, the paper can lift and possibly even tear off, meaning you don't have your template anymore. Another option which is more common in marquetry and intarsia world, but less common in general woodworking, is using some carbon paper to transfer directly onto the wood. I'll be transferring my design onto the plywood, so I have my template, some blue tape just to keep it in position. I'm gonna get out a fresh sheet of carbon paper. Carbon paper is quite inexpensive. I got a hundred sheets for about $12, I think it was. Waxy gloss paper side goes up. The black side goes, to the carbon side goes towards the plywood itself. And I put it on another piece of tape just so it doesn't move and then I can transfer that across. This particular pattern doesn't exactly need a whole lot of accuracy so it doesn't really matter what I use for my stylus. I'm just going to use a large carpenter's pencil and I just need to trace the lines. Lift up the paper. These two pieces will act as a hinge. There you go. Transferred to the plywood really quickly really easily. You can see marks left behind where the carbons come off. Anything in between can still be used, so this one sheet will still do me for quite some time and many templates. You may have noticed I keep saying carbon paper specifically rather than transfer paper, and there is a difference, and it is important to be aware of the difference. Carbon paper is the older product. It is the basis of carbon copy, the term carbon copy for photocopying or creating copies of things. It creates a much more permanent um, copy of something on wood, that's great, that's what we want. The downside is apart from just the ink, it also transfers a little bit of a waxy, greasy substance, so you could theoretically run into some issues with finishes. Realistically, that's not really a thing, because you're gonna sand your workpiece anyway, and that'll get rid of it, it's so minuscule. However, if you're in the art world, that can be a problem. And the bigger problem is, again, in the art world, that the carbon can't really be erased without removing the paper. For the art world, the alternative is transfer paper or graphite paper. It looks very similar. We've got one side that has the graphite on it, one side that you copy from, but it makes a much lighter marking that can be easily erased. In our case, that's not something you actually want for woodworking patterns, but let me show you how it comes out. So we have graphite paper here, or transfer paper, and carbon where it says carbon. Might even be hard to see it on camera, but there is that hello transfer, but it's very, very faint. If you're going to cut something out with a jigsaw, not so great. Whereas on the carbon paper, very, very clear. Off camera, I used a spray adhesive to glue the template down to the plywood, and I wanted to demo the issue with the paper tearing. Usually it'll tear off with a drill bit, almost always with a jigsaw, but I guess this time I got the kill time right since I left it overnight. Finally, the power chisel actually did lift up the paper, then I could also show off how difficult it can be to remove all the paper without sanding it. Let's say you've got a little bit more of an intricate pattern that you're trying to copy, perhaps it is intarsia or marquetry, or you're worried about one of the processes maybe smudging off some of the ink. What you can do is print your design onto tracing paper, and with the tracing paper you can add these little crosshairs. Just like before, we've got our pattern down with the Tape acting as a hinge, put the carbon paper underneath, 
and we'll put the crosshairs in first. Then when we remove it, we can see the crosshairs clearly. Let's say we take our template off and we want to line it back up. Since the tracing paper is semi-transparent, we can line up both crosshairs, tape it down again, we've got our reference, and then finish tracing the rest of the design. No matter what method you use, whether it's the acetone toner transfer, the sticking templates down, or carbon paper, hopefully this gives you a few ideas for transferring patterns. Thanks for watching.